The Golden Era, other known as the Golden Age. By its literal meaning on Wikipedia states, a period in a field of endeavor when great task was accomplished. The term originated from early Greek and Roman poets who used it to refer to a time when mankind lived in a better time and was pure. The Golden Era of FIFA. If I asked you what was the greatest ever period in FIFA, if you do not say FIFA 12, 13, 14, or 15, then I think you're clapped. Mankind lived in a much greater time back in FIFA 15. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video on my channel today. I'm going to be looking back on another FIFA. We have done episodes of FIFA 19, FIFA 18, FIFA 17, FIFA 14, and now it's time for FIFA 15. If you guys do enjoy, smash the like button, let's hit 2,000 likes, and we're coming up to a quarter of a million subscribers. Feel free and drop some love down below comments. Tell me, what is your thoughts on FIFA 15? I've got many great ideas about this FIFA, some many great memories. FIFA 15, for a lot of people, including myself, is the end of the golden era, the golden age of FIFA, where people just enjoy the game, have many more happy memories of this game. Nowadays, people don't really have many happy memories of recent FIFAs if it's just about them grinding the game for 18,000 hours just to get the same team as everyone else to then do the same thing next year. Back in this FIFA, it was a lot more naive. It was a lot more experimental. You could try out different teams, try out different formations, different tactics. It didn't really matter what your record was or what packs you got for completing a certain rank. You just played the game. It was as simple as that. You played the game with your mates and if you lose, okay, that's fine. Next game. When everyone was a lot more social and the entire community wasn't based on its toxic need for rewards and just getting better teams and better packs. And actually, before you get into the features and the gameplay, Let's let's get one thing straight here. I'm going to play you one thing right now, and I guarantee about 80% of you, even if you're a woman, will get an erection. Play it. You have an erection. Don't even try to pretend that you don't. You, you do. FIFA 15 had one of the best soundtracks I've ever... Like, honestly, the banging soundtrack. Utter banging soundtrack, man. I loved it. Down below in the description, I'm going to put down a link to the Spotify soundtrack for FIFA 15, and it is beautiful. You got Avicii, The Knights, one of the best songs of all time on FIFA. We've got Cocoon, Catfish in the Bottom, and we've got Come Alive, which is an absolute banger. 16 years, all or nothing, busy earning, Stevie by Kasabian, Down by the River, When the Day Comes, My Type. I could keep going. 15 had this wonderful style. I love the menus of this FIFA. I don't know why, just the entire, like, kind of golden, but, like, blurred out. The circular shiny things. I don't know how to explain it, but I just remember this design so well and I loved it back in these days, man. FIFA 15 Korean mode had things such as a team management layout a lot better with better instructions and formations. You can actually customize your tactics a lot more. Back in the days, I loved the look of the shortlist. You have the little design, physical to the right and everything you need to know on the left hand side. I'm pretty sure this is new. I don't think 14 had this. This is like a new kind of design. It made everything look a lot more simplistic and the actual menus. It just looked more polished than menus. It looked more like a serious game. And imagine this, but then with the, the banging music in the background just makes it feel like a such a much better experience. And of course, the Premier League brand 
new cinematics everywhere. It makes it look a lot more official. The store, the official scoreboards and the music, and it just if you were a Premier League fan, if you support Man United or Arsenal, like the the jump from 14 to this, and you had the actual stadiums as well. Don't forget that. So beforehand, you didn't have Turf Moor, you didn't have the Liberty Stadium or whatever else. But now you actually do. You have each Premier League stadium. That was a massive jump as well. Keep in mind, we went from having like five state stadiums in Premier League, you know, White Hart Lane and Etihad Stadium in Anfield, to then having the entirety of Premier League was actually a very much needed step because it felt like people kind of, you know, falling out of love with FIFA at a time and found it boring. But now with this, it brought it all back to life now. And let's get into FUT. I'm just going to be naming a bunch of players right now, but you already know who they are. Dumbia, Ibarbo, Javinho, that entire trio scarred us for life, I think. Like, I don't think I can ever think of players in FIFA and not think of Dumbia. It was it was dumb. I played a lot of this game, and my own personal favourite was Lacazette from Lyon. I loved his card so much, but don't forget, that's a Schurler. Rob Bain was an unreal company. Yaya Torre, Vincent Company, Gail Clichy, Couture, Kyle Walker, that was like part of my team. But don't forget about the Serie A teams. You had Pogba, and Guarine, and Vidal. And then in the Bundesliga, we got Adrian Ramos with a Abamyang, a right mid Abamyang. And how can we forget also the likes of Balassi as well and Shikawi, these enjoyable cards that we can use at all different varieties of FIFA. Speaking about players, let's talk about gameplay. What was the gameplay like? And really, the jump from FIFA 14 to 15 seemed really interesting. That it seemed a lot more skinnier. Like the, the players seemed skinnier. They wasn't as bulky anymore, which meant that they were more prone to falling over some balancing issues, which could be annoying at the time. But it made it so that if you have any, you know, very skillful, flair, your high as jersey players, it did make a difference. Pace was again still important, but crossing wasn't as OP as it was back in 14. So that was a massive bonus for a lot of people because people. People did get, you know, kind of bored of considering after corner, after corner, after corner, back in 14. Looking back, I don't think it was really all Peter one thing or another. It seems like, yo, like, finesse shots could work, or it could be a chip shot, or it could be a, a near post. Each type of shot felt balanced, and it did completely rely on what is your current situation of when to shoot and how to shoot. Of course, back in these days, there were coin sponsors, and that was still a very big part of the community because, I mean... What's the point of spending fuel points when you can just get the coins that you want for free and a lot cheaper? I mean, we're speaking like it costs you like 15 quid for about a million coins or to even 2 million coins. I think I saw on some websites. It was incredible. And EA, of course, were losing a lot of money because of it. So they hatched a plan and that plan was, in my opinion, what really kind of killed the game for this FIFA and then afterwards that it kind of made people just kind of get a bit bored of the game and that was of course the implementation of price ranges. EA's way to stop people from buying coins and from transferring coins from one account to another is by getting rid of trade offers by forcing a price range that it cannot be topped or lowered to a specific range on every single card in the game including bronze cards, silver cards, gold cards and the highest cards possible. Only issue is though is that because they put it half for the game that meant that some players just didn't exist. Yeah, some players that had this price range, EA didn't know what to put to that because it was run by a free market and because they tried to control it and they have ever since that there was such a small gap of range that people just didn't think it was worth listing it. So for months at a time, there were cars that didn't have any anyone on the market. Every single team of the year card at the date of March was no longer on the market. They were no longer found on the PS4 market and also on Xbox market. There were no team of the years ever on the market. And it wasn't just team of the years as well. In from Neymar, in from Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Ribery, all these in from cards just was no longer on the market. Imagine this nowadays that like, let's say you can't afford a, a Rashford unless you had enough money for his inform because there was none of his gold cards on market. This was a situation, like you could not use these cards. So for most people, it kind of ruined the fun because most cards that you wanted to use, you couldn't use anymore. And it was at this stage that, in my opinion, this was the end of the golden era where people just played the game for four, not, ca not caring about packs and rewards and being competitive every second. It was at this stage which people just didn't just want to use different teams for the sake of just using different teams and wanting just to play the game. It felt like their freedom almost took away from them and people just kind of gave up the game. And then afterwards with FIFA 16, and we all know how that went, 
It was boring as sh- And I could go into Pro Clubs, but I, I, I didn't really play it back then. I, I didn't have friends, so I can't really comment, really. There you go, boys. That is FIFA 15, the end of the golden era. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and smash a like button. Let's hit 2,500 likes if you guys did enjoy. And I really hope that you guys enjoy your night. You have a good time. And of course, one day left of my 30-day fitness challenge. I've been running each day, 10 kilometers each day for the entire time. And I've really, um, it was, it's, it's been great. Honestly, I've been enjoying it. So yeah, thank you for watching. My name is Vizan. I'll see you next time. Rockstar life, rockstar